Hi everybody, it's just me LTM. I'm coming to you today from my kitchen and I'm going to be making something. And the image that's on the screen now will give you a little bit of a hint as to what I'm going to make. If you're interested in making your own household products, and there can be all kinds of reasons for doing that. It could be so that you know for sure what ingredients have been included in those products, particularly if those products are going on or in your body. Also, because it's gentler on the environment, no harsh chemicals being used, no ridiculous uh, production methods that produce you know, waste that's harmful to the environment, and also maybe because you're concerned about packaging, maybe you're concerned about the use of plastic and you want to reduce the amount of plastic in your life. Making your own products at home is a really great way to reduce the amount of packaging that you bring into your home. So if you're interested in any of those things for any of those reasons, then keep watching and let's go on a bit of a let's make it journey together. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own toothpaste. I've been making my own toothpaste for quite a few years now and these are the ingredients that you need in order to make the toothpaste that I'm going to make. You can Google make your own toothpaste and you'll find a multitude of recipes online and that's how I started out. I found a recipe that I thought sounded good and I have adjusted it over time to my own needs. For example, the recipe that I was following had stevia in it to add a little bit of sweetness, but I don't use any stevia in mine. So the products are coconut oil, pure vegetable glycerin, which you can buy at your health food shop usually, and bicarb soda. Now they, they will form the basis of your toothpaste and you don't really need to add anything else to it. However, you can add essential oils. And um, yeah, I guess it's fair to say I have a few essential oils. <laughs> so the essential oils that I usually like to use in my toothpaste are myrrh because it has really good properties to do with mouth hygiene and also spearmint for the flavour, sometimes peppermint, and also clove oil. And when I was young, if you had a toothache, mum would reach for the clove bud oil, uh, dab a drop onto your tooth, and it would really seem to help the pain of a toothache. So I do also add clove oil into my toothpaste when I make it most of the times. And you'll also need a little container to put your toothpaste in. Now the quantity I make fits in this container really well and it usually will last me a couple of months. I do only brush my teeth once a day, much to my dentist's annoyance. Um, but that container, uh, which I think originally had some kind of a creamy lotion in it, that container will last me a couple of months in toothpaste. So they're all the things that you need in order to make toothpaste, although you do, no, do not need such a wider range of essential oils. You don't need to add any essential oils at all. In fact, you can just use the base ingredients. Um, but if you do want to add some flavor, two or three essential oils is all that you will need. So let's get on with the making. When I make my toothpaste, I make it in this uh, really small little food processor that I have. Uh, it, was, it was really cheap. I've had it for a really long time. So, um, so I just use that all the time and it's the only thing that is used for. I only use this food processor for making my toothpaste in. So the first thing is three tablespoons. This is a really simple recipe. Three tablespoons of coconut oil. And because we're just coming out of summer here, my coconut oil is a bit liquidy. 
So um, I just have to be a little bit careful putting this in. So that's one, two, and three tablespoons of the coconut oil. Uh, I will mix this up and see how it goes. And if I don't like the texture, then I will either add more coconut oil in or add more bicarb in, depending on whether I feel the mixture is too uh, thick or too runny. Now, the texture of the toothpaste will change during the year in winter time because a coconut oil is a solid in winter time, then your toothpaste will be harder, or your homemade toothpaste will be harder in winter and sloppier, more liquidy in summertime. So you may want to adjust the recipe yourself, depending on whether you're making it in summertime or whether you're making it in winter time. So that's really up to you. It depends on what kind of texture you like, how you want your toothpaste to feel. Now I'm just looking at that and I think I'm going to add a fourth tablespoon of bicarb. Usually this is a three and three recipe, so three tablespoons of the coconut oil and three tablespoons of the bicarb. But I've put an extra spoonful, uh, tablespoonful of bicarb in there because it was just looking a bit too runny for my liking and now the vegetable glycerin now there are thoughts on whether it's a good idea to add a vegetable glycerin to your toothpaste or not uh, and I don't add it every single time that I make my toothpaste the reason why there's some thoughts about not adding this in is because um, it can prevent the it puts it can put a coating over your teeth and prevent the natural action of saliva in your mouth. So what would usually happen in your mouth can't actually happen as well. So I tend to only put this in every second time. It probably would be better if I made two batches at a time one with the vegetable glycerin in it and one without the vegetable glycerin in it and alternated between using one and the other each day. Um, but the way I do it is I make a batch that has the vegetable glycerin in it and then the next batch I won't put it in. Why add the vegetable glycerin? I really like how it changes the texture. It gives it a much smoother texture. It's quite a dense liquid you would have perhaps seen as I poured that in there. And now I'm going to mix this up. So I'll just pop the lid onto the food processor. And this is going to be really loud. So hold on to your ears. I'm just going to stop recording for a minute while I mix this because that's really loud. Okay, so I've mixed that for, hmm, I don't know, 30 seconds maybe. And, uh, and it's very, very liquidy, very liquidy. So way more liquidy than it should be. So I'm going to add some more bicarb into this mixture. I'm gonna add two, I think. I'm just gonna mix this again. So I'll just uh, turn off the video while I do that. And let's see how that's looking this time. Let's grab a teaspoon. So that's looking a lot more liquidy, um, not as runny, it is thicker and as I said, as the weather cools down, this will actually get even thicker. So this is probably okay. I don't think I will add any more bicarb or anything like that in there. I'll just scrape this spoon off to get that back down in there. And now I'm going to add the essential oils. So today I'm using spearmint. I use spearmint quite often. And this brand, Tinderbox, is made here in Western Australia, down south in a little town called Bailing Up. So I'm adding about 10 drops 
of spearmint. I wasn't counting, so I'm not sure if that was 10, but I am pretty sure it wasn't too many. And now I'm going to add some myrrh. And myrrh is quite a strong essential oil, so you only need a few drops of this. I usually do have a uh, an eyedropper, but I'm having trouble locating it at the moment, so I'm just going to use a metal skewer to put a couple of drops into my mixture. So I'll just pop the skewer in there, one, two drops, three, four, four nearly, and five drops. Five drops of myrrh is ample. Now the other oil that I have here to add in today is clove. I mentioned that during the intro. Clove bud is a very old fashioned remedy for toothache and things wrong in your mouth. Like if you've got a, an abscess on your gums or something, clove oil will help to um, reduce the pain of that. So it's also something really good to add into your toothpaste. A lid off this one it does have a dropper in it so I'm only going to put about three drops of clove in here this can be a really thick oil so it's taking a while for it to come out one two oh. and come on you can do it three okay so that was three drops of clove clove bud oil I do strongly recommend that you do reading if you are going to add essential oils into your toothpaste. You need to um, do some reading to find out what is safe and what is not. Not all essential oils are meant to go inside of your body. So please make sure you know fully that you are fully informed before you start putting essential oils into your toothpaste. Read more than one site. Don't just read the information on one site. Read a couple of sites to make sure that you're getting correct information. All right, I'm going to, to stop the video again because I'm going to just give this a bit more of a whiz around. Okay, so that has finished mixing. And you may be able to see now that my mixture is now quite a yellow colour and that's because of the myrrh. The myrrh is a coloured essential oil. It's kind of reddish so it does put a colour into my toothpaste mix. If you put less it won't colour it as more obviously. The other oils are colourless so they haven't added anything to the colour. And now it's just a matter of transferring this into my container. And then this lives in my bathroom cupboard and I use my toothpaste. So here we have my container of toothpaste ready to go into the bathroom. When I'm ready to use it, I just grab my toothbrush, put a little bit on there and then brush my teeth and rinse that as normal. Obviously it doesn't foam up or anything like that because it's got no, none of those kind of soap or detergent type of products in it. Uh, it does taste quite salty because of the bicarb. Bicarb is a salt, so it does taste salty. And that's the reason why some people like to put a sweetener in there, like that's what the stevia will do for you. It will add some sweetness in there. But I, I did start using the stevia when I first started making my toothpaste, but I stopped using it pretty quickly. And now I'm very used to the taste of my a bit salty homemade toothpaste. So there you go. If you're going to ha have a go at making this, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know. If you have a different recipe that you use for your toothpaste, then let me know that too. I'm really always very happy to uh, see what other people are doing and learn from it. Maybe there's some ingredients you know about that I don't include in mine that have really good benefits for your dental and mouth hygiene that I could consider adding, in, adding into mine. But yeah, it's really easy to make your own products. It doesn't take long. You don't need lots of fancy equipment. You can actually just mix this together in a bowl. You don't need to use a food processor for it. I just like to do that because I'm a bit lazy and I've got it anyway, so I use it. Let me know, why do you make your own products at home? 
Is it because of plastic packaging? Is it because of the ingredients and trying to reduce the chemical load on your body? What is it? Why is it that you're making your own products at home, whether it be toothpaste or something else? Anyway, that's it from me for today. I'll see you next time.